Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be going over a comprehensive look at all of the layer modes found in GIMP. So there are currently 38 layer modes found in the latest version of GIMP. 12 of these layer modes were added with GIMP 2.10 so if you're using a version that's older than GIMP 2.10 you won't have access to these layer modes. And I will of course be going through all of these layer modes found in GIMP in today's tutorial. I also have another tutorial on my channel that goes over an introduction to layers as well as some advanced layer concepts. So if you're not familiar with layers and the layers concept in GIMP, which is a very important concept for GIMP, I recommend you check out that tutorial first before you watch this tutorial. So before we dive into this tutorial, I want to direct you guys over to my website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. You can also support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon, and you'll get some awesome GIMP extras in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So I'll be using a few photos for today's tutorial. I'll also be linking these in the description of the video, and you can download all of these from Pixabay as per usual. So when you're working with layer modes, you're typically working with two layers or you're working with a tool within GIMP. So layer modes do work with layers or tools in GIMP. But think of the top layer as the blend layer. It's also called the active layer and the mask layer. So the top layer is instrumental in how the layer mode causes the two layers to interact with one another. Although in some cases in what is called a commutative layer mode, uh, the order of the layer modes doesn't matter, so the top and the bottom have the same significance. The bottom layer is typically known as the base layer or the image layer, and this layer is typically where the final result of the layer mode uh, interaction between the two layers is going to reside. So from a technical standpoint, layer modes work because pixels are assigned a value. Every single pixel in each layer within GIMP are assigned a value, and those values then, when using a layer mode, are plugged into an equation. So you have the pixel value from your top image and your pixel value from your bottom image. Both of those are plugged into some sort of equation that produces a new pixel value, and that new pixel value is then displayed on the blended layer, so the final result basically is displaying the pixel value created from plugging those two numbers into the equation. Pixel values in GIMP are between 0 and 255, 0 being black and 255 being white. So typically when the pixel value is closer to 0, it's a darker pixel. When it's closer to 255, it is a lighter pixel. And when you're plugging these numbers into the formulas, if the pixel value that comes out is a negative value, so let's say it comes out as negative 5, that pixel will typically be displayed as a black pixel unless the formula states otherwise. The same applies to the white pixel, so if a value exceeds 255, that pixel is typically displayed as a pure white uh, pixel, unless, again, it is specified in the formula that it's to be displayed as something else. So another way to visualize how layer modes work from a technical standpoint, and this might just be confusing you guys, but it is good to know the technical side of things, Pixels uh, on a top layer and a bottom layer have a location, and typically in these layer mode formulas, the pixels that are being combined are the two pixels, one in the top layer, one in the bottom layer, that are both in the exact same location uh, in their respective layers. So basically the pixel values from the same locations are always being added into the formula from the top layer and the bottom layer. If none of this is making sense to you, by the way, don't worry, I'm going to explain all of these concepts in a lot simpler terms as we get through this tutorial. So let's dive into our GIMP now. And layer modes can be found up here in the layers panel. If you don't have your layers panel open, you can go to Windows, recently closed docs and it'll be right here or if it's not there you can go to dockable dialogs and right here you have your layers panel. So again right here at the very top of your layers panel you have your layer modes and the default is going to be set to normal. You also actually have layer modes in some of your tools in GIMP. So right now I have one of my paint tools which is the gradient tool open and you'll see I have a layer mode here. So this allows you to just apply a layer mode to the tool as you're using it versus waiting to apply it to the entire layer. So this is obviously helpful if you just want the layer mode applied to the tool and not the entire layer. Although if that's the case, I do typically recommend just painting with your paint tool on an entirely separate layer. So pretty much all of the paint tools within GIMP are going to have the layer modes, but I'm mostly going to go over the layer modes within just the layers panel for this tutorial as that is the most common use and that's the most common way to explain how layer modes work. You can combine layer modes with the opacity slider here to compound effects and produce different results results, 
as well as use them with layer masks and layer group masks to also achieve different results. And we'll get into some of that a little bit later in this tutorial. So clicking on the layer mode drop down, you'll see here are all 38 layer modes. There's actually seven different layer mode types, at least that I know of. So you have normal, lighten, darken, contrast, inversion, cancellation, and component. And for the most part, these different layer mode types are separated by a line here. And of course, I'll go into what each of these different layer modes does, and that's gonna help simplify what those layer mode types actually are. So I'll close this layer mode drop down temporarily. So right now I only have one image within my composition and as I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, layer modes typically are an interaction that takes place between multiple layers. So what I'm gonna do is bring in another layer here. So I've got another image right here and all I have to do is click and drag this tab and then drag over this tab here, drag over my composition and then release. And now I have two different layers. And for simplicity, I'm gonna name this the top layer and this is the bottom layer. So I'm gonna start with the normal layer mode, which is what this is set to by default. All this means is that the layer on top covers the layer on the bottom. So as you can see, when I clicked and dragged this image into our composition, it created a new layer and it put it at the top and it covered up our bottom layer. So I can show or hide this layer and now you can see the bottom layer below. So all the normal layer mode setting does is it basically doesn't affect this layer at all and it causes the layer stacking order, which means the order in which these layers are stacked on top of one another is going to favor the very top image. So it's only going to display the top image first. And then if you do anything to this top layer, like decrease the opacity, then it'll start to display the layers below. Or if the layer above is smaller than the layer below or has any sort of transparency, then you can see the layer below in the stacking order. But just for the sake of simplicity, if the two layers are the same size, like in this case, when you have this set to normal, this is going to cover the bottom layer. So that's pretty simple. I'll move on to the dissolve layer mode. So I'll click on here and go to the next one, dissolve. So right now that doesn't do anything and the reason is that this layer mode dissolves the upper layer into the lower layer via a random pattern of pixels drawn in areas of partial transparency. So right now there is no transparency here and that's why we don't see any effect. But if I do something like grab my eraser tool and I have this set to a pretty soft brush here and here's the hardness, it's set to 25 so this is a pretty soft brush. And let me just increase the size of this brush as well maybe a little bit more. So because this is a soft brush, it's creating partial transparency. So if I set this to normal, you'll see usually this is causing the image to fade into the image beneath it. So this transparency is fading, it's zero transparency here, 100% here, and then it's fading right here where I use the eraser or around the edges of my eraser. So when I set this to dissolve, you'll see that partial transparency is converted into this pixelated look. And you can get a better look at this if I hold control and zoom in with the mouse wheel. So here you'll see that there's a bunch of pixels here and you'll notice that none of these pixels have a smooth edge. They all have hard edges. And the reason for that is that this layer mode does not have anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing is an effect within GIMP that smooths rounded edges. Uh, so it smooths pixels to make rounded edges look smoother. And in this case, it doesn't do that. So all these pixels are square. So it just creates this look like this photo is dissolving into the next photo. And that in a nutshell is the dissolve layer mode. So I'll hit control Z to back up to before we use that eraser and use my mouse wheel to zoom out. The next layer mode is color erase. So let me actually just switch over to my move tool and I'll come over here to mode and I'm gonna change this to color erase. So basically all this does is it takes the colors from the top layer and it erases those same colors from the bottom layer. In this case, we have a lot of different colors because we have two images. So it's kind of hard to tell what exactly this layer mode is doing. But let me change this top layer mode back to normal. And let me grab my foreground color here, grab my color picker tool, and I'm gonna just select a color from this image. So let's go with the color from her lips here. So this sort of pinkish color, and I'll click OK. And if I create a new layer, and I'll just name this color, fill it with transparency, and set the layer mode here to color erase and click OK. Right now nothing will happen because we don't have a color on this layer, but if I grab my bucket fill tool and I paint this color on here, it's gonna erase all instances of that pinkish color. 
So now all of that color is gone from here. If I hit Control Z, I can also do this with a paintbrush. So let's say I take a paintbrush, I'll decrease the size, and I'm going to paint on this layer just where the lips are. You'll see now the color in the lips that we selected with our color picker tool has been erased. So that's what the color erase layer mode does. So I'll hit Control Z. So that was the color erase mode used on a layer. If I delete this layer here, I can actually use the color erase just with the paintbrush tool by itself. So I'll change the mode to color erase. And instead of the paintbrush painting this color on our composition, now it'll erase that color from our layer here. So I'll hit Control Z. By the way, that layer mode type is a cancellation layer mode because it does cancel out colors within the layer. The last two layer modes that we went through, including the normal and the dissolve layer modes, are both considered normal layer modes. So the next layer mode is going to be erase. And what this does is it just erases pixels from the top layer, from the bottom layer. So if I set this to erase, it's going to erase everything within the bottom layer because there's the same number of pixels in the top layer as the bottom. So I'll come over here and choose erase and you'll see that the only thing left is transparency. Let me hit Control Z. If I hide this layer, create a new layer, and I'm gonna set this mode to erase, and I'll fill it with transparency, click OK. Nothing will happen right now because there's no pixels on here. Let me change the mode of my paintbrush back to normal. So now if I paint any pixels on my color layer, which is set to the erase mode, it's going to erase any of those pixels that I draw from that bottom layer. So you'll see as I paint on here, it's basically acting like an eraser and just erasing those pixels. So that is also a cancellation layer type. And one thing to note here, I'm gonna delete this layer and unhide this top layer. If I use this layer mode, the erase layer mode with the layer mask, it'll actually invert what's going on with the layer mask. So remember layer masks are a non-destructive way to delete pixels from an image. Uh, they add transparency to the image using black and white. And I'm gonna go through that in a second. But because layer masks do work with transparency, which is an erasing property, when you add this erase layer mode to that, it's just going to invert it because basically the layer mask is already erasing things. So basically it's like creating a double negative here and it's going to invert whatever is happening on the layer mask. So I'm gonna come over to my top layer, right click and go to add layer mask. And under initialize layer mask two, I'm gonna choose white full opacity and make sure my invert mask option is unchecked and I'll click add. So usually white on a layer mask would totally reveal the image, but in this case, you'll see that when we add white to this layer, it hasn't done anything. And now what I'm gonna do is paint black on the layer mask. That usually adds transparency to the layer where you have the layer mask on, but in this case, it's actually going to reveal pixels. Uh, so let me just demonstrate that real quick. So I'll grab my paintbrush and I'm just gonna paint on my layer mask and you'll see it's actually going to reveal the pixels of the bottom layer. So let me come over here, right click and delete this layer mask and then change the mode here back to normal. So for my next layer mode, I'm gonna come over here to my other image. And here we have two images that are actually from my how to blend two images together tutorial. And what I've done is I've basically created them so that they're still blending into one another, but there's just this little gap between the two of them. So there's some missing pixels here and this is all from one image. So these are two parts to one whole image. One part of the image is the winter image and that's on the top. The other part is the mountains image and that's on the bottom. So I wanna merge these two together, but I don't want there to be any pixels missing in the middle. So if I come up to the top layer and I change this layer mode to merge, you'll see this has gone ahead and merged these two photos together and it's also filled in the missing pixels here and now the two parts of the image have become a single whole image. If you wanted to actually merge these two layers together and just create one single layer from it, you can right click on here and go to merge down and that'll merge your two layers together now and it's become one image and it's become one whole image. I'll hit control Z and just back up. So the next layer mode is called split and that just subtracts the top layer from the bottom layer. And so let me just demonstrate by coming over here to the layer mode and I'll change this to split. And so now you'll see that top layer has disappeared. So in my opinion, this layer mode is almost exactly the same as the erase layer mode. I'm gonna change this back to normal. So next we're gonna get into the lighten layer mode types and this does exactly what it sounds like. It's going to create a lighter image between your two layers that you're using. So the first layer mode I'm gonna use is the lighten layer mode. I'm gonna come back over here to our original two layers that we've been working with. And I'll come over here to mode and change this to lighten only. 
What this does is it keeps the lighter pixel values between the top and the bottom layers. So looking at this image after we've applied the layer mode, you'll see that it kind of creates this spliced composition. And the reason it looks like this is because it's taken the lighter pixels uh, located throughout the image and it's only kept that pixel between the two. So remember both the top and bottom layers both have their own pixel values. So there are two pixels assigned to the same location when stacked on top of each other like this. And what this layer mode does is it only keeps the one pixel in that single location that is the lighter of the two pixels. And so that's why in some cases you've got uh, some pixels from the top image here, like the girl's face. So this part of the girl's face was brighter because of the light that was hitting her face. And the wall, same thing. The pixels in this wall were lighter than the pixels below. So if we hide this layer, you'll see the pixels in this lower layer are still pretty bright, but they're not quite as bright as this wall right here. On the other hand, her eye right here is brighter than the girl on top's hair. So if I hide that bottom layer, you'll see the hair pixels are pretty dark, whereas these pixels all right here are pretty light, so it only kept the lighter pixels right here. If I were to perform this with an all black layer, so let me create a new layer. I'll set the mode here to lighten only, and I'm gonna fill this with my foreground color, which right now is set to black, and I'll click OK. And then let me come over here to this layer and change this to normal. So because every pixel in this layer is dark, they're all pure black, basically it's just going to cause this entire layer to disappear when we use the light and only mode on here. Now on the other hand, if I change this color to white, and I fill this with all white, What's gonna show up is pure white because pure white is the lightest pixel you can have in GIMP. So I'll just fill this with white and now you'll see that with the layer mode set to lighten only, the only thing that shows up is the pure white layer. So I'll just exit out of that. Lighten only is actually our first commutative layer and that means that when I add lighten only to this top layer and lighten only to this bottom layer here, it actually doesn't matter which layer is the top layer. It's going to produce the same result anyway. So if I move this to the top, you'll see nothing has changed about this. If I move this back up to the top, uh, you'll see again, nothing has changed. So as long as both of these have the layer mode set to light and only, it doesn't actually matter which one is on top. But if I change this one to normal, you'll see there's no change here. But if I move this to the top, you'll see that now that's disappeared. So both of these have to have the layer mode set to light and only in order for the commutative principle to work. And again, commutative just meaning that the order of the layers doesn't matter. So let me change this back to light and only so that both layers have the light and only layer mode selected. So again, no change here. And let me now actually switch this to a layer mode that is not commutative just for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna switch this to dodge. So both of these will be set to dodge. Now, if I switch the order of the layers, you'll see the final result is slightly different. And so that's why the dodge layer mode is not commutative. I'm gonna get more into what the dodge layer mode is in a second, but I just wanted to demonstrate what a non-commutative layer mode was. All right, so now that I've demonstrated that, I'm gonna switch this to the next layer mode, which is actually Luma or Luminance Lighten Only. And I'm gonna switch this one back to normal. So Luma Luminance Lighten Only is actually very similar to Lighten Only. The result is almost exactly the same, except it's keeping the lighter pixel value between the top and bottom layers based on the Luma or Luminance value of the layer, as opposed to just using whatever pixel value is lighter. So the difference between Luminance and Lightness is very minute. Luminance is actually a unit of perceived brightness, and that is taking into account both hue and lightness. So color is factored in here as well as lightness, whereas lightness itself is obviously just lightness. It's only one variable. So you'll see the main difference here is that luminance is also taking into account the brightness of a color. Hopefully that makes sense for you guys. So to sum that up a little bit more simply, the layer mode is still just picking out which pixel is the brighter of the two pixels from the top or the bottom layer, but it's also factoring in the brightness of the color as well. So the next layer mode is screen. So I'm just gonna change this to screen. And I think it's important to go through the equation of this layer mode because it does play a pretty big role in how this effect is created. So bear with me here. Screen inverts the value of all pixels between the two layers that are being blended. So it takes the pixel value from this top layer, inverts it, and then subtracts that value from the inverse value of all of the pixels from the bottom layer. So after it subtracts those two values, it then divides it by 255. And you'll remember 255 is the value assigned to white. 
and the inverse is then taken from that final value. To simplify all that craziness from that formula, the values are inverted, divided, and then inverted again, and the final product is an overall lightened image because basically what happens with all of that is that uh, most of the dark pixels or the black pixels are taken out of the layer. So you'll see here after we applied that screen layer mode to this top layer, pretty much all of those dark pixels have been removed, including the black pixels from here. And what you're left with is an overall brighter looking image. So if I set this back to normal, this was a pretty dark image uh, compared to what the final result was. And let me set this back to screen. So that has screened out all the dark colors. And I've used this layer mode in other tutorials where I'm trying to get rid of the black background out of an image. This quickly will remove a black background from an image. This is another commutative layer mode, which means if I add this layer mode uh, screen to the bottom layer, and then I switch the order of these, you'll see that the final result is the same no matter what order they're in. I'll change this back to the normal layer mode, same with the bottom layer. Our next layer mode is dodge. So let me click on our top layer and change the layer mode to dodge. And this was the example we used as the non-commutative layer mode because uh, the order of this does matter for the final result. But dodge lightens or inverts colors on a layer and we're gonna get into the formula here briefly. So the dodge layer mode lightens or inverts colors on a layer by multiplying the pixels on the bottom layer by 256 and dividing that number by the inverse of the top layer. So GIMP actually admits that the dodge layer mode actually works a little bit better with something like the paint tool. There also is a dodge burn tool. So there's a tool dedicated to dodge and then burn is the counterpart to dodge. It actually does the opposite of dodge and we're gonna get into that a little bit later. But just keep in mind that you can use this as a layer mode, but GIMP actually recommends using it in a tool instead. So essentially all you need to know about the dodge layer mode is that it is going to lighten your image overall. So dodging was used in dark rooms to brighten areas of an image by decreasing the exposure of the film negative. And that sounds like a mouthful, but basically all you need to know about film negatives and how it relates to GIMP here is that a film negative produced the opposite in the actual photo. So if you decreased exposure in a film negative, it would cause an increase in exposure in the final photo. And here in GIMP, they're trying to emulate that dodging process by brightening your photo. All right, so moving on to our next layer mode, I'm going to add addition to our top layer. So let me change the layer mode from dodge to addition. And you'll see this also lightens the layer. This is the last of our lightened layer types. And what this does is it's adding the pixel value from the top layer to the pixel value from the bottom layer. And any pixel values from that equation that exceed 255 are going to be turned into a pure white pixel. And this is going to brighten our image overall because if you think about it, remember pixel values that are closer to zero are gonna be darker and pixel values that are closer to 255 are gonna be white or they're gonna be lighter. So by adding the pixel values from the bottom and the top layer, you are essentially increasing every single pixel value across the board. Unless of course it's a pure black. So if you have pure black on pure black, it's just gonna stay black because zero plus zero is zero. And this layer mode is also a commutative layer mode. So again, if I add addition to the bottom layer as well, and then I swap these, you'll see there's no change to this. So it doesn't matter the order of the layers here, it's going to produce the same effect no matter what. All right, so next we're gonna get into the darken layer mode type. So all of these layer modes we're about to go over are going to darken your image overall. And I'm gonna start with the first one, which is probably the simplest, and that is the darken only layer mode. So let me come over here to our top layer and change the layer mode here to darken only. So you'll see that's obviously a lot darker of an image than the lighten only. So there's lighten only. Here's darken only. So this layer mode is actually the opposite of the lighten only layer mode because instead of keeping the lighter of the two pixels between the top and bottom layers, it's only going to keep the darker of the two pixels between those two layers. So if I hold control and zoom in with my mouse, all of the leftover pixels here from this equation are the darkest of the pixels. And let me just do a comparison. So if I switch this to normal and then hide this layer, you'll see that these pixels are pretty dark. These pixels here are pretty light. And then if I unhide this layer, these pixels are pretty light. Uh, most of these pixels are fairly dark here. These pixels right here are fairly bright where you see some white here. So when I add the darken only layer mode to this, you'll see the lips, the pixels from the lips here are darker than the pixels from the nose that were right here. But the pixels from the shadow of the nose are actually darker. So those are what were kept right here. So that's what the darken only layer mode does. 
It does create kind of a weird spliced final image. If I put an all white layer here, so if I create a new layer, keep the name color, and I'm gonna change the fill width to white and click OK. So right now this layer mode is set to light and only. If I select dark and only here, it's not gonna keep any of the pixels from this layer because all of the pixels from the white layer are white, and that's obviously the lightest a pixel can be, and this layer mode is only keeping the darkest pixels. You also see here that I have three layers stacked and they are all actually interacting with one another. Technically speaking, a layer mode is only going to interact with the layer below it, but if that layer below it also has a layer mode, that is going to interact with the layer below it. And so that's how you're gonna get all three of these to be interacting with one another. So let me just delete this layer. The next layer mode is essentially the same and that is the Luma Luminance Darken Only layer. So you'll see that that created almost the same exact result, except that it's producing the darkest pixel between the top and bottom layers based on the luma or luminance value. So it's not just taking into account the lightness or brightness of a pixel, it's also taking into account the perceived brightness of a color within that pixel. So it does just produce a slightly different effect, although the effects are very similar. So next I'm gonna change this to our layer mode multiply. So this multiplies the pixel values of the upper layer with those of the layer below it, and then divides the result by 255. So if you think about what this layer mode is doing from a mathematical standpoint, let's say your top pixel value is 10 and your bottom pixel value is 25. So it's multiplying these together, which is gonna give you 250, and then you divide that by 255, and that's gonna give you a little less than one, and a little less than one means it's very close to zero, and remember, zero is black. So what it did is it took these two pixel values, 10 and 25, plugged them into this formula, and it created a lower number. So between 10 and 25, you get a little less than one, which is less than both of those values we just plugged in. So what this equation is doing is it's creating darker pixels overall across the board, because it's shrinking the value of all of these pixels and the smaller the value of the pixel is, the darker that pixel is gonna be. So an important thing to note is that if one of these layers is black, so let me just add a new layer here and we'll set the name to color. We'll fill this with transparency for now. And let me grab my foreground tool, choose black and fill in this layer with black using my bucket fill tool. And let me change the layer mode of this over to Luma Luminance Dark and Only you'll see the final result is gonna be all black whenever we use black as our layer. And that's because every pixel value of the black layer is gonna be zero. Zero times anything is zero, and you can't divide into zero, so basically you're just always left over with black for every pixel between both images. White on the other hand, so I'll just turn this value over to white. You'll see that's just going to create basically a completely transparent layer. So I'll just go ahead and delete that layer. And the next layer mode we're gonna use is burn. And as I mentioned, burn is the counterpart to dodge. And so pretty much all the same rules apply to burn, except it does the opposite as to what dodge does. So instead of brightening the image, it's gonna darken it. So again, this layer mode was born from the technique used in the darkroom film days when you were trying to, in this case, uh, decrease the exposure in your final image by increasing the exposure in your film negative. And so basically the uh, burn tool is emulating that through its formula and the final result is going to be an overall darkened image. All right, so moving on, our next layer mode is the linear burn layer mode. So let me switch my layer mode here to linear burn. This is actually very similar to the multiply layer mode. So you'll see the difference is only uh, very slight here between the two. Linear burn takes the bottom layer's pixel value plus the top layer's pixel value, then subtracts 255. So instead of multiplying the two pixel values together from the top and bottom layer and then dividing by 255, you're adding those two pixel values together and then subtracting by 255. So you're getting a slightly different final pixel value, but in essence, for both the multiply and the linear burn layer modes, you are getting a darker image overall. All right, so next we're gonna get into the contrast layer types. So I'm gonna start here with our top layer and I'm gonna change the mode to overlay. So what overlay does is it uses a lengthy equation and this equation is a combination of multiply and screen. And the result of this is it makes your lights lighter and it makes your darks darker and it's gonna make your midtones basically unchanged. So this is mostly gonna affect the contrast of your image, hence why it's in the contrast layer type. But you'll see like in this case that it's also affecting the brightness of the image. So the image has become a little bit brighter overall. And I think the overall look of your final image that's being produced is going to depend on how many dark pixels are in your image and how many light pixels are in your image. Cause again, it's making those darks darker and those lights lighter. 
Next is the soft light layer mode. So let me change this to soft light. So this layer mode is actually very similar to overlay, only it's going to make your final image look a little bit softer and a little bit less bright. The equation for this layer mode is pretty complicated because it uses its own lengthy equation and then it adds to that the equation from the screen mode. When you're using a color like white with this layer mode, so let me add a new layer here, change the layer mode to soft light, and then I'm gonna fill this with white and I'll click OK. And let me change the layer mode of this top layer to normal. So when you're using a color like white, it's essentially creating a diffused light. So you'll see that, uh, let me just turn the opacity down on this. So you'll see that the overall photo here looks a little bit softer, but it's also a little bit lighter. So it's sort of like using a diffused light on your subject. And let me hide this layer so you can see this in action with the lower layer. So if I hide this white layer, you'll see that the photo is a little bit darker. And then if I just unhide that layer, you'll see it's a little softer and a little bit brighter here. So it's almost like we had a very bright, uh, diffused, soft light going on in the photo. So I'll just delete that white layer and then unhide that top layer. So I should mention that overlay and soft light actually used to be the same exact layer mode. They produced the same exact effect in older versions of GIMP, but they updated these two layer modes for GIMP 2.10 so that the effects between the two are now slightly different. So our next layer mode in GIMP is called hard light and it actually uses two separate methods depending on the pixel value within the image. So if the pixel value of the top layer is greater than 128, so this is all the brighter pixels, it's going to use one equation and then if the pixel values are lower than 128 in that top layer, it's going to use another equation. So basically it's going to depend on whether it's a brighter pixel or a darker pixel, the type of equation that's used. And what this ends up doing is it makes the darker pixels even darker and it makes the brighter pixels even brighter. So this layer mode is very similar to overlay in that it uses a combination of multiply and screen, except the final equation for hard light is a little bit different than overlay. So it's gonna produce a slightly different result. But what it's going to do is it's going to either add shadows or highlights to your image, again, depending on that pixel value. And when your top layer is a color other than black and white, let's say like an orange or something, it's going to produce what looks like a hard spotlight hence the name hard light for this layer mode. So let me go ahead and demonstrate here. So I'll start by setting this top layer to the hard light layer mode, just so you guys can see. So as you can see, the lighter pixels here, the pixels with values above 128 have been made even brighter. So that's made her forehead really bright here. And then the darker pixels, which would be like her hair have become even darker. And that just applies across the entire image here. Let me set this back to normal and I'm actually going to create a new layer and I think it's going to be more efficient to demonstrate this with a color. And I'm gonna change the mode here to hard light. And I'm just going to fill this with transparency for now and click OK. So let's start with a gradient. So I have my gradient tool selected here and I just click this icon to reset my colors to black and white. And now I'm going to draw this gradient from the top left to the bottom right. So the top left had black as my color, the bottom right had white. I'll hit the enter key. So you can see that the pixels got darker where I had the black color and where it's pure black in the gradient, the colors just turned to pure black. And then same over here with the white. And then the midtones over here sort of almost disappeared or just really don't have much effect. And I can decrease the opacity. So this is decreasing it all the way to see a before. And then if I slowly increase it, you can see what this is doing. So that's using black and white, but let me get rid of that color layer and create a new one. So I'll keep the same settings. I'll set the mode to hard light again and click OK. This time let's go with the bucket fill tool. And let me just choose a color. Let's go with blue for now and fill this in. So this is making this layer look as if it has a spotlight that is a blue color light on the photo. Let me hit Control Z. I think it actually might be better to demonstrate with the gradient tool again. And let me change the color here to foreground and transparent. So that way we have a blue going into a transparency. And then I'm gonna change the shape here to radial. And now you can see our spotlight here. It looks like a blue spotlight on our image wherever we move this. And I could try to change the color here. So let's go with more of an orange. So same thing here, it just looks like a pretty harsh spotlight. It actually uh, is easier to tell with this warmer color here. And I'll hit enter. So that's what the hard light looks like here. And let's just go back and compare that to the soft light real quick. So there's the soft light, much softer, more diffused look. 
and here's the hard light, much harsher light, and it looks more like a spotlight there. So our next layer mode, which is vivid light, is actually similar to hard light, except it's going to apply a color dodge to colors that are lighter than 50% gray or just the lighter colors, uh, lighter pixels in our image or it's going to apply a color burn to colors that are darker than 50% gray, so that's just the darker pixels in our image. So whenever the color dodge is applied, that's going to decrease the contrast in your image. Whenever the color burn is applied, it's going to increase the contrast in our image. So this is just working on the contrast of our top image here, and it's going to blend that into the bottom image. So let me demonstrate. So I'll just delete this uh, color layer, and I'm on my top layer here, so let me come over to mode, and change the mode of this to vivid light. So as you can see, similar to the hard light, the lighter pixels have taken on a lighter value, and in this case, they've just turned almost to a pure white, and then the darker pixels have just become darker, except in this case, it is more applied to the contrast of these colors, so there's a lot more contrast in the darker areas and a lot less in the lighter areas. So our next layer mode is pin light, and that's going to apply the darken and lighten layer modes to our pixels, depending on whether or not it is, again, a lighter pixel, lighter than 50% gray, or a darker pixel, darker than 50% gray. So the lighter pixels will receive the lighten layer mode, and the darker pixels will receive the darken layer mode. So again, making our lights lighter and making our darks darker. And the midtones or the middle gray parts of our image, so those are the pixels that are right at 50% gray, those are just going to disappear altogether. So let me come over here and change the layer mode of the top layer, and I'll change this to pin light. So again, our lights are lighter, so the lighter part of her forehead is much lighter now. The darks are darker, again, looking at the hair. And in this case, with this layer mode, all of the middle gray colors have been removed. And let me change this back to normal, and I'm going to create a new layer. And this time, I'm going to change the layer mode to pin light, and I'll click OK. And using our blend tool with black and white selected, and let me make sure that I change the blend mode here to foreground and background. And so now I'm going to draw this, and you'll see our darks get darker wherever there's black. The middle gray part of the image, so that's the middle of the blend, wherever uh, black is turning to white, just disappears altogether. And then as we get towards white again, it's going to use that light and layer mode. So I'll hit enter. So this is the effect created by this gradient using this pin light layer mode. And actually, let me just demonstrate this with the vivid light layer mode since I didn't do that before. So here you'll see the bottom right corner, there's a lot less contrast, but it's a lot brighter. And in the top left corner where we had black, there's a lot more contrast, but it's also a little bit darker. So let me change this layer mode back to pin light. The next layer mode is linear light, and this again is very similar to the other layer modes we've been going through, and that is that it makes our lights lighter and our darks darker, except this time, whenever the pixels are lighter than middle gray, lighter than 50% middle gray, it's going to uh, use linear dodge, and whenever our pixels are darker than 50% middle gray, it's going to use linear burn, and this of course is either going to lighten or darken our existing pixels in that top layer that we're blending. So let's come over to our composition, and for this one I'm just gonna keep this color layer here, and I'm just going to change the layer mode to linear light. So up here in the top left we have linear burn, and down here we have linear dodge, and that's making our darks less bright and making our lights more bright. And I can hide this color mode and apply the layer mode to our top image here just to see what this looks like. And we've got pretty much the same thing, brighter pixels wherever we had pixel values that were greater than 50% middle gray, and less bright pixels wherever we had pixel values less than 50% middle gray. And I'll just change this layer mode back to normal. So the last layer mode for this section of the layer modes is called Hard Mix. And what this does is it adds all of the pixel values between red, green, and blue of the top pixel and the bottom pixel. And if that value is greater than 255, it's going to just set that value at 255. And if that value is less than 255, it'll just set that value to zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to make all of your red, green, and blue pixel values set to either 255 or zero thus making all of the pixel values in your image what's called a primary additive, and that's really like a pure form of red, green, or blue. So let me demonstrate this here. If I come over here to our top layer and I change this to hard mix, you'll see that our colors here have become either a pure white, or you can see here there's like pure blue, pure teal, a lot of pure colors in here, reds, oranges, colors of that nature. 
And if I just change this back to normal, and let me just delete this color layer here and create a new one. So we'll just again set this to color, but we're going to change the layer mode here to hard mix and click OK. And now let's change our uh, blend here or our foreground and our background color. So we've got blue and then let's go with a contrasting color. So let's go with more of an orange or an orangish yellow. I'll click OK. And using our blend tool again and making sure this is set to fade to our foreground and background colors. I'm just going to draw this gradient now and you'll see remember in the top left we had that blue color so now these have become pure blue and then the middle grays have become sort of a pure white when they're mixed in with the very bright pixels of this original image the top layer image and then down here everything starts to become a pure yellow pretty much uh, or pure red so basically tones of this orange or just um, colors that are nearby on the color wheel so I'll hit enter so that just creates a very interesting mix of colors there. So now I'm just going to delete this color layer as we head into the next section of our layer modes. And that is the inversion section starting with difference. And what this layer mode does, and bear with me on the explanation here, is it's going to take the absolute value of the top pixel layer values minus the bottom pixel layer values. So what that's going to do essentially is it's going to take the top layer minus the bottom layer, and then it's going to just make that number a positive, even if that's a negative. So let's say that you do you know, 150 minus 250, so you get negative 100 as the final pixel value. By taking the absolute value of that negative 100 number, you're going to get 100. And what this uh, layer mode does essentially is it's going to invert a lot of the colors, uh, if not most of the colors. So coming over here to our composition, if I change the mode of this to difference, you'll see we have a lot of inverted colors. So wherever we had dark pixels and pixels that were black or close to black, we now have white or close to white. And then same with the brighter pixels, those now become closer to, to a black color. And this layer mode can be useful, let's say when you're trying to realign an image. So let me set this layer mode back to normal and duplicate this layer. And now I'm going to change the layer mode of that top layer to difference. So when all of the pixels are aligned, it's just going to create a pure black image. But if I grab my move tool and I move this image a little bit to the right, you'll see that some of the pixels start to show up again. So this is how you'll know that this image has been aligned uh, using this difference mode. And I don't recommend trying to align images by hand unless you absolutely have to. You can always use the alignment tool here. So I can just click on this top layer and just align relative to image and align these images up with one another. And now this comes back to black. So I'll just delete that top layer. The next layer mode is called exclusion and it's almost exactly the same as difference except it's just a more mild form. So like difference it's going to create inverted colors but the colors are just not going to be as intense. So if I come over here and change the layer mode to exclusion you'll see we still have inverted colors here they're just not as intense. And let me just change this back to normal again duplicate this and change the layer mode of the top to exclusion. You'll see that this technique doesn't work really with this layer mode here because we don't produce an absolute black. So let me just delete that. So our next layer mode is subtract and as the name implies, it does pretty much the exact opposite of the addition layer mode. So it's going to subtract the top layer pixel value from the bottom layer pixel value and any pixel that is less than zero is just going to be set to black. And so this is going to create a darker image but it's also going to invert the image. So coming over here to our composition, I'll set the top layer here to the subtract layer mode. And as you can see, it not only makes the composition darker overall, but it also inverts a lot of the colors here. And that's why this is within our inversion layer modes. Our next layer mode is grain extract. And this layer mode subtracts the pixel value of the upper layer from that of the lower layer, and then adds 128 to that. So this produces an image that is pure grain, or in other words, is all of the film grain extracted from the top image. So if I click on grain extract, all that is left on that top layer is going to be the pure grain. And when using two different images, like in this case, you can see it's going to create an inverted effect, hence why this is within the inversion layer modes. But if we use the same image, so let me just duplicate this top layer, and I'm going to change the original layer back to normal. At first, this is going to create more of a gray image. You can see when I move this top layer over a little bit, it's going to definitely show the graininess uh, created by this layer mode. And in fact, this looks very similar to the high pass filter, which is found by going to filters, enhance, high pass. This is sort of the look that you're going to get using that filter. 
So our next layer mode is called Grain Merge, and it is similar to Grain Extract, except instead of adding the top and bottom layer pixel values and then adding 128 to that, it's going to subtract the top and bottom layer uh, pixel values and then subtract 128 from that final value. So this layer mode really works best when you take a composition such as this one that we created using the Grain Extract layer mode, and you add that on top of an image and then apply the grain merge layer mode to this composition here or this top layer image. And let me demonstrate that for you real quick because that's kind of confusing. So here I've got our composition that has the grain extract applied to it. If I click and drag this over here to our original image and just drop this on top of the image, you'll see our top layer is now that grain extract layer. And so I can just rename this grain extract layer. So if I take this layer that has the grain extract on it and I change the layer mode of it to grain merge, it's going to merge this grain extract layer with the original bottom image layer. And that is just basically going to create a grainy looking image. As you can see, this image looks a lot grainier than it did before. So here's a before and here's an after. And this almost gives this image like a 1970s vintage film look. So I suppose that's one uh, application for this if you want to make uh, photos look a little bit aged or almost like they were taken on a film camera. All right, so navigating back to our original composition here, I'm just going to delete this top layer copy. Our next layer mode is divide and this multiplies each pixel value in the top layer by 256 and then divides that by the corresponding pixel value of the upper layer plus one. So this is all a very complicated equation, but at the end of the day, all it does is it creates a burned out looking image or what it also does is it'll take a color tint that's in your image and go ahead and minus that color tint out. So it effectively removes color tints from your image. And I'll demonstrate that here with our top image. So using this top layer as a reference, I'm going to create a new layer and I'll change the layer mode of this to divide. And I'm just going to fill this with transparency for now and click OK. Now I'm going to take my foreground color, grab my color picker tool, and I'm just going to choose a color from the wall back here. And you'll see it's sort of an off-white color. And let's say that the reason I'm doing this is I want the wall to look a little bit more like a pure white. So I'll click OK here, and then I'm going to use my bucket fill tool and just fill this color layer in with that off-white color. And you'll see that what that's done since our color layer is set to the divide mode is it's removed that tint from the back wall there. And so it's made our whites look more like a pure white. And uh, so this is just improve the color of the image overall, assuming you want to get rid of a certain color tint in an image. And let me hide these two layers and I'm going to perform the same action with the bottom layer. So I'll create a new layer, keep the layer mode set to divide and click OK. And let's say I want to remove the bluish tint from here. I can grab my foreground color and with my color picker tool, just choose uh, the white in here by the ocean or whatever body of water this is. And so what this is going to do essentially is it's going to take this off-white color and it's going to make it a more of a pure white color. And I think the color I grabbed was a bit too, yeah, it looks like I grabbed a pure white. So let me just grab a color that's got a little bit of blue in it. And using my bucket fill tool, fill this in and you'll see that's removed some of the blue tint from this bottom image here. So now I'll just delete these color layers and unhide our top layer. All right, so finally with our layer modes, we are getting into the last section and that is going to be the component section of our layer modes. And the first layer mode in this section is going to be HSV hue. And what this is going to do is take the hue from our top layer and combine it with the saturation and value of the bottom layer. So in layman's terms, this combines the color of our top layer with the intensity and brightness of the bottom layer. So coming back to our composition, I'll create a new layer, of course, named color, and I'm going to come down to HSV hue, and I'll click OK. And let me just change this to a random color. Let's go with this red color here. So in theory, it should make everything a sort of red tint while keeping the brightness and the intensity of the colors below. So I'll fill that in with red. So as you can see, everything's got a red tint here. Her skin is looking a little bit more red, the wall. Everything has a red tint, but the intensity of the colors and the brightness of the colors have remained the same. So this is one effective way to recolor our photos or our artwork within GIMP. So some of the layer modes within the component section are going to recolor your work, whereas other layer modes in this section are simply going to adjust the intensity or the brightness or the purity of our colors. And of course, you're going to see that as we get into this. So one last note about the HSV hue is that this is useful when you just want to change the color of your or image or your layer and you don't want to change any other properties within this image or layer. 
So I'm gonna keep this red color here for our next layer mode, and that is going to be HSV saturation. So what this does is it keeps the saturation of our top layer while keeping the hue and the value of the bottom layer. So as you can see, what this does is it intensifies the saturation of all of our colors across the board in this image, and that can create some funky results here. So anything that had a tint, for example, this had, I guess, a yellowish tint to it. This one had a bluish tint, and uh, just so on with the colors throughout. It's going to intensify the saturation of those tints to make them as saturated as the uh, colors in the layer on top. So in this case, since we had a very saturated red as our top layer, it's just gone ahead and made everything super saturated in the layer below. And if I hide this top layer, it's going to blend with this bottom layer here. And same thing applies here. Everything just becomes a very saturated version of itself. So this layer mode is useful when you want to change the intensity of the colors within the image without changing the actual colors or the lightness or darkness of the colors within that image. So our next layer mode is HSL color and it's easy to overlook the fact that this is HSL color, not HSV color. So the L stands for lightness. So this takes the hue and saturation from your top layer and combines that with the lightness of the bottom layer. And this is useful when you're recoloring black and white photos. So a lot of those tutorials on a, how to recolor a black and white photograph are going to use this layer mode, or at least it should in some way. So let me demonstrate here on a black and white photo. So I'm gonna go to File, and in my case, Open Recent, because I opened this photo recently. So this is just an image of an old Mercedes. Obviously this has color to it right now, so not super effective in what I'm trying to demonstrate. But I'll just turn this into a black and white image by going to Colors, Desaturate, Desaturate. I'm gonna desaturate this based on luminance and click OK. So now we have a black and white car here. Let's say I wanna make this car the red color we've been using. So I'll create a new layer and I'm going to change the layer mode of this to HSL color. And I'm going to fill this with our foreground color which is going to be our red right here. And I'll click OK. So now you'll see our entire car has turned into this red color. If I wanted to just color certain parts of this car, I could right click and add a layer mask. And under initialize layer mask too, I could click black and then make sure this invert mask option is unchecked and click add. So now that's completely hidden our red layer and I can grab a paintbrush here, switch the colors to black and white and switch my foreground color to white. And now wherever I paint white on this layer mask is going to paint our car red. And of course, this car was already red in the original image, so maybe that's not as exciting. So let me change this actually to green, grab our bucket fill tool, click on our original layer, and fill this in with green instead. And now our red Mercedes is a bright green color. So grab our paintbrush tool again, switch the colors back to black and white, switch the foreground color back to white, and continue painting. All right, so I'll just leave that as is for now, just for the sake of time, but you can see how useful this HSL color layer mode can really be when you're trying to recolor your black and white artwork. So let's move on to HSV value, which you'll notice is switched back to HSV from HSL, so we're dealing with hue saturation value again. What this will do is it'll take the value of the top layer and combine that with the hue and saturation from the bottom layer. And so I'll show you what kind of effect this will produce by coming back over to our original composition. So I'll change this color layer to the HSV value. So value is basically the lightness of the layer. So because this is a very light color, it's turning our bottom layer here to a very light image while still maintaining the overall hue and saturation of the image. And if I unhide the top layer, you'll see it'll perform the same thing. So let me hide this. Here's a before. Here's an after, so this is a much lighter image, but the hues and saturations overall are still pretty much the same. So the next layer modes on here are the LCH layer modes. These are still component layer modes. The difference is that they use a different color space, so instead of using hue saturation value or hue saturation lightness, they're gonna use lightness, chroma, and hue. So lightness is most similar to value, Chroma, most similar to saturation, and hue is, of course, the same. It's still hue. Chroma and saturation differ because chroma is more of the purity of the color, and it also incorporates the saturation of the color, whereas saturation is more so just the intensity of the color. And so these are going to perform the same things as the hue saturation value layer modes, except, uh, of course, it's going to affect the lightness, chroma, and hue values of our layers. So let's dive into the first layer mode, which is the LCH hue. So this is going to keep the hue of the top layer while keeping the lightness and the chroma of the bottom layer. So as you can see, it still has a red tint, much like HSV hue did, except the tints are different. So here's HSV hue. 
So it's almost like a darker red. And then here is the LCH hue. So still a red hue, but it's just a slightly less intense hue there. So here's before without the tint at all. And here's after. And now let's switch this layer mode to LCH chroma. So very similar to HSV saturation, except instead of keeping the saturation of our top layer, which is our red color, it's going to keep the chroma or the purity of that red color. And it's going to assign that purity value to the hue and the lightness from the layer below. So you get those very pure yellows and blues since there were tints of these colors before. And of course the uh, more pure colors here in the skin tones. And then next we have the LCH color. So this is going to be similar to HSL color, except instead of hue, saturation, lightness, we're using lightness, chroma, and hue. So the main difference is going to be using chroma instead of saturation for this one. So here it is applied to our red layer on our top layer. And if I come back over here to our black and white Mercedes, this layer mode is actually used for the same purpose as HSL color. So it's great for recoloring black and white photos. You're just gonna get a slightly different color out of it. So I'll come over here and change the layer mode to LCH color. So here we're gonna get a sort of a darker green here as opposed to that lighter green when using HSL color. And let's come back over to our original composition and we're gonna change this now to LCH lightness. So we are keeping the lightness of the top layer with the chroma and the hue of the bottom layer. So in this case, the effect is kind of strange and that's because the lightness of this red, I suppose, is not super light. If I change this to our white color here, so a pure white, you'll see it's going to be a lot lighter. And so it's combining this very light top layer with our chroma and our hue from the bottom layer. And last but not least, we have our layer mode luminance. So this uses the luminance from the top layer and combines it with the hue and chroma from the bottom layer. And this will actually create an inverse result as would the LCH color layer mode. And I'll demonstrate that in a second. It's also going to be only a slightly different result from the LCH lightness layer mode. The reason being that uh, lightness and luminance are actually very similar. But if you'll remember from earlier in this tutorial, luminance is actually a unit of perceived brightness whereas uh, lightness is basically just going to be brightness. Uh, those are almost synonymous terms there. But luminance is also going to use a little bit of a hue value there since hues do have naturally a little bit of luminance to them. So luminance again is perceived brightness. So it's going to differ only slightly from lightness. So let me come over here and demonstrate all of those. So here we have our white color layer. And I'm just gonna change the mode from luminance to LCH color. So you can see that the LCH color is an inverse layer mode to the luminance layer mode. And now I'm just going to change this to LCH lightness. So there's lightness and there's luminance. And the results are different, but they are just slightly different there. So hopefully that helps you distinguish the different LCH layer modes from one another, especially comparing lightness to luminance and luminance to LCH color. So that's it for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. If you liked it, please subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Davies Media Design. You can also visit our website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. You can enroll in our best-selling GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.